is Magnar and welcome back to episode 2 in this modding tutorial series for Rome 2 Total War. In this episode I'll be going through the pros and cons of the two main modding tools we use and why I use one over the other more so. So those tools are the community created pack file manager or PFM which is here you can see it's kind of like a file structure and of course the official Total War Creative Assembly assembly kit currently in beta which is here now I use for the most part PFM as do many of the other large Rome 2 mods for a number of reasons most importantly, it is much easier for us to maintain, organize, and debug our mods using PFM. It's also better for mod compatibility, allowing for custom named uh, tables which don't conflict with each other. Uh, and for me personally, it allows me to use this. Un this comes ticked as default. I always have it unticked because it allows that little box there means that I don't have to mod tables in a certain order I can do them whichever order I like as long as I do all the ones that are required and so that allows me to change my workflow a little bit which I like to do the creative assembly assembly kit I'm just gonna call the kit from now on because that's a mouthful also has its benefits one of the big ones especially when you're starting out is this thing here called the Variant Editor. Now the Variant Editor allows you to see models, all the models in through the Variant Editor rather than having to load the game up. Ooh. I'll get more to this, I'm just going to show you a quick example of There you go, now you can see the neckerchief, or crest. There's a crest you can see. So you can just see what they are straight away without having to load the game, and that helps you with making your units, if you're going to make units, by knowing what, every, what it's going to look like before you actually load the game up. Another huge benefit to the assembly kit is the ability to do a global search. So when you're trying to do something which there isn't any tutorial for and people haven't probably haven't done before and you want to try find a way to do it you can type in something into here like I don't know, campaign <laughs> a, a word like that's going to give so many results but and then it gives you where all that anything that has the word campaign in it can be found Actually, let's do something. So that can be very helpful as well. Once the bugs are kind of figured out, another huge advantage, which I'm sure a lot of mods will start using, uh, to for the uh, this, the kit, is the ability to create start pos changes, which don't have to be updated or redone with every patch. When doing start pause changes with the kit, if there are any large uh, additions to the start pause, like maybe new factions are added or any number of things, usually the start pause has to be redone completely from scratch. Over the last nine patches that, that CA have released, I've probably had to redo my start pause for my mod maybe seven times. Almost every patch means you have to do it, almost. Thankfully the last one didn't. But with the kit, you can actually create changes in tables, um, which then export, create new start pods, and they will persist over the updates. And so that is going to be something which, when it's actually working properly, 
will be great. At the moment, if you create a start pos through the kit, you don't have any victory conditions in your start pos, so it's kind of you have to add them yourself manually. So there's still problems with it, but hopefully that all gets fixed and then it'll be a really great tool for that. Another really simple way to uh, illustrate the difference between the PFM and the kit is the kit is like a one-way street. The kit you can create stuff in your files and then you can extract it to a mod. If you're going to be doing small stuff and not really collaborating with other people on it, that's fine. Not a problem. You don't, you don't need to use anything else. If you don't want to use, say, Dresden's season effects or uh, some other kind of small mods, you don't want to add them to your mod to create you know, your own certain way of playing, then you know, if you're going to do it all yourself, you can use the kit and it'll just go on a one-way street. But that also means you can't create two mod packs of your own simultaneously and then combine them together. You need the pack file manager to do that. PFM is much more flexible. It allows you to extract other packs and then import them into your own pack. Um, it allows you to rename your tables so you can have more than one type of table so you can find things a lot easier. Uh, when, when you're testing out new things and using uh, tables that you've used for other stuff. Um, it just allows you to go in there quickly and find what you want to find, change what you want to change, and uh, keep a better overview of your mod. I'll go more into that in the next episode um, and talk about a bit more about the structure of how uh, preparing to mod, how to structure your fo the folders, how to name your mod and all this kind of stuff will be in the next episode. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.